Hello, 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 you guys. Um, so, hello. Tonight, God has been speaking to me all yesterday and then today. And honestly, I've been a little bit disobedient because I've been under the weather a little bit. So I just didn't want to do it, <laughs> honestly. But it just reminds me of Jonah. So tonight, we're going to be in the book of Jonah. And Jonah is four chapters, and we all know the story. It was all told to us about Jonah being disobedient and being swallowed by the whale and being kept in the belly and then spit back out, right? Um, hi, everybody. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. I'm going to be in the book of Jonah. I am in the NIV translation right now. And um, yeah, so we're going to be in Jonah and normally I proofread because I stutter, so I have to read before, but God just told me to just do it and let him just have his way. So I love you guys too. <laughs> I know it's late and I know it's a little impromptu, but this is when God has told me to go on. So this is where we are. If you're just joining, I'm literally just starting, so you haven't missed anything. This is going to be in Jonah, and I'm going to try to read all four chapters just to get context. But um, we all know about Jonah growing up. Jonah was a prophet who didn't want to prophesy to a specific group of people. But God had me focus on the words tonight, anger management. Those were the words he wanted me to hit. So I don't know if you guys have been struggling with anger or if that's been a big thing for you. I know in the beginning of my um, ministry, because I've always had a really bad attitude when it came to certain things, I'm really nice until I'm not. And God had worked with me on it. But Jonah is the, uh, literally, he embodies the anger management word for tonight. So tonight, maybe this will help somebody with it because baby Jonah wasn't the one for it. Jonah was like, let them burn. Let them, I don't care. I, do what you got to do, God, because I ain't preaching them. Get somebody else to do it. He was very stubborn and he didn't want to save that city because they were just so unruly. They were so disrespectful and all of that stuff. Like that was who Jonah was. What, Manny? Have a nightmare. Jemani. What is it about? About a game. Because you was playing that game. Get your shirt out your mouth talking. What is it? This is about a game I drove before. Okay. Do you want to sit with me while I do this for a second? Yes, ma'am. Come on. Okay. My little baby. Okay. So, he's going to join me for a minute. You want to help me read? Yes, ma'am. What's pretty, though? Right here. I'm going to okay. read just a little bit. Now, now the will of the Lord came to Jonah, Jonah, the son of Armidi, Armidi, saying, "Wise, a wise to go to Nineveh, go to Nineveh, Nineveh, the that great city, and cry to out it for the wick." The wickedness. The wickedness has come up before me. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Armidi, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So Jonah had specific instructions. God told Jonah, Get up, go to Nineveh. I have something for you to deliver to them. But Jonah wanted no parts of it. He wanted no parts of this city at all period so jonah was like i'm about to dip at i'm about to dip at so then we come right here what did it say but jonah jonah arose to flee the to tarnish tarnish from the presence presence of the lord he went down to Joppa. 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 And I found a ship going to Tarnish. Tarnish. So he paid the fare and went from the. Down into it. Down into it. And wait, to go. go. Mm -hmm. To go with them to, to Tarnish. To Tarnish from the presence. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarnish 
from the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and he found his ship going to Tarnish. So he paid the fare and he went down into it to go to Tarnish from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah was told that he needed to go to Nineveh to preach. But Jonah was like, nah, get somebody else to do it. I ain't with it. I'm not finna do it. So he thought that he can run from God. And honestly, how many of us have thought that we can outrun God? Like God told you to do something specifically, but you were like, mm, I don't like them. I don't like them. How many times have God told you to pray for an enemy? And you like, mm, get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else to do it. I don't want no parts of it, period at all. And that's what Jonah was saying. Jonah was just like, nope. They sinful, they disgusting, they talked about me, they did whatever, get somebody else to do it. That's what Jonah was saying. Not me, not the day, not tomorrow. I'm about to get on this ship. He done paid his little 30 pieces of silver. He done jumped on his fare and he is about to be out. He's done with it. So it said, um, you want to read this one? No, ma'am. Okay. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was, um, but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest of the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the uh, the marinas were afraid, and every man cried out um, to his God, and threw the cargo that was on the ship into the sea, so it lightened the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lower part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. So Jonah is on this boat. Now the Lord calls like caused a big wind to come and now the ship is just about to be wrecked. It's a great storm coming and Jonah is nowhere to be found. Jonah is in the bottom of the ship. And if you paid attention, it said that they cried out to their gods. So clearly they didn't already believe in Jonah's God. They didn't know what to do. They were just crying out. It was like, hold on. We were selling good until we stopped here to get them. And all of a sudden he on the ship. But now he's sleep and we fighting the we fighting the sea like it's, it's everything's happening. The wind's blowing. The ship is acting like it's about to the flat um to go over and everything. But he's fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, "What do you um What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we will not perish." So he down there sleeping and they like, well, we calling on our guys, but you down here sleeping peacefully. So you must know something. You sleeping too good. You sleeping real good. Now nah, get up and call on your God and perhaps he'll have mercy on us. Cause ain't no way you supposed to be sleeping, but we up here fighting the winds and the rains and the floods and you down here sleeping real, real good. Too good. Now nah, you know something. Get up and begin to pray to your God. Cause maybe your God will consider us. So, um, seven, and they said one to another, come, let us cast lots that we may know for, um, that we may know who's the cause trouble has came upon us. So they cast lots and the lots fell on Jonah. So they looking like, it ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't do nothing crazy today. And they looking over at Jonah, the fast asleep sleeper. They looking at him like, bruh, you did this, didn't you? What did you do to your God to make him cause this ship to do all this stuff and the winds and the rain and everything? Like, we about to die. Like, hold on. Hold on. It's you. What did you do? And what can, what can you do to fix this? Eight. They said to him, please tell us for who's the cause. Mm -hmm. it, hmm? Can we eat mine? Okay. Um, they said to him, please tell us for who's the cause, cause of this trouble is upon us. What is your occupation and where do you come from? What what is your country and what um and what kind of people are you? So they're just really trying to figure out. They're just like, who are you? What did you do? Why are you here? Why are you sleeping while we crashing? Who are you? Like, what did you do? What what did you do to make your God this angry that He's about to make all of us perish? Like, what did you do? Go ahead, baby. So he said to them. I am a Hebrew, a Hebrew, Hebrew, and I fear the Lord and the God of heaven who made the sea and dry the land. So he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and dry ground. 
Um, then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. So they like, if you running from the almighty God, why, why on this green earth did you choose this boat? Why did you choose us? Why didn't you get on another ferry? Why didn't you, like, who told you that this was the boat for you to get on and run from God? Don't you know he about to hunt you down and to get to you, he'll get us? Nah, nah, nah. We ain't signed up for this. We did not sign up for this. Now they all like, I'm not with it. I'm not with it. I'm not with it at all. Who told you to choose us, basically? You want to read? Yes, well. Which paragraph? 11. Then they said to him, Wait, shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more than previous. Mm, to Pinterest. For <laughs> That's fine. They're asking him, like, what do we have to do? Like, what can we do to stop this boat? Like, what can we do to stop this storm? Like, what can you do? You might need to cry to God. You might need to do some um some some hallelujahs. You might need to do something because right now we're all about to perish. You need to get up. You need to get up and you need to talk to God. You need to make amends with God. Whatever it is, you need to get on up. And it said, and he said unto them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this is, that this, hold on, stop, stop moving, baby. I know that this is the greatest tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to the land, but they could not for the sea continued to grow more temp, no, more temp, I can't even say the word right now. More angry, let's put it that way, against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with the innocent blood for you. O Lord, you have, O Lord, have done as we have done as you please. So they're like still not wanting to throw Jonah over. They don't want to have him die, but they don't want to die. So now they all plead and like, God, what can we do? What can we do? Jonah is telling them the only way to make the sea get calm is to throw me over. But they don't want to throw him over because he might die. So they just like, God, what can we do? So they picked up Jonah and they threw him into the sea and the sea ceased um, and the sea ceased from raging. So they came into a mutual agreement. They did what he said and they threw him into the sea, just like he said. And the sea ceased from raging. So it stopped raging. It stopped being angry once they threw him in. Because God is like, because <laughs> God is like, yeah, he's going to do what I tell him to do. And anything that is coming up against what I tell him to do, you're going to fall down too. It's just like, okay, when you're helping people that God told you not to, everything that you touch is now going to now going to be in wrath of God too because God is saying I know how to handle my children and you helping them is getting in the way of their deliverance so now I got to take you out too you're not anybody's God. You don't go try to save somebody that God says, no, I'm going to do what I need to do for my child. You can't save somebody from the wrath of God, but you can jump in that fire if you want to. You can jump in that fire if you want to. God is saying, I know what to do for each of my children. I know what to do for each of my children. I am their father. You might be their brother. You might be their sister. You might be their mom, their aunt, their whatever. But God is saying, that's my child. And I know how to parent my child. And you can't tell me how to parent my child. Some people have to hit rock bottom. And sometimes you're the only thing that is stopping my child from hitting rock bottom. So now I got to remove you out the way. And in order to remove you, I got to break you too. God is saying, you got to throw them into the sea. I don't know who you've been protecting or who you've been trying to stop from hitting rock bottom. But God says, take your hand off of it. Because I got to parent my child. And I have every right to parent my child because this is my child. And only God knows how to break us down and how to break us down to the lowest common denominator, to the lowest bit of hum humility to get us to listen to what he says. And sometimes after the breaking, you'll realize that you'll never break like that again. You'll be obedient. You'll do everything that God says and you'll be a changed man or woman. 
If you've ever been humbled by God, you understand exactly what I'm saying. If God has ever had to break you down to the lowest common denominator to where you're screaming out, God, please, you understand what I'm saying. And anybody that kept trying to help you is only going to get hurt in the way. Sometimes you have to move out of God's way. You have to move out of God's way. You're not God. You can't save them all. You have to let God do his perfect work in each and every one of his children. Some people have been given money and you're wondering why your money is going out and everything. Yes, baby. Your money has been depleted because God is saying you're not sowing into fruitful ground. You're actually helping them. You're, um, what is it? Um, you're being an accomplice to them, an ally or whatever it is. Um, you're helping them, huh? Friend? Not a friend, baby. But it's like when you're helping somebody self-sabotage. I can't think of the word to start with that. Anyway, you're helping them destroy themselves. And yeah, enabling. There we go. Thank you. You've been an enabler. Thank you. You're being an enabler to them. And you're not helping them. You're actually hurting them. And you're actually helping them go down the, the, the rabbit hole even further. And God is saying, you need to move out of my way and let me do my perfect work on each and every one of my children. That boat and those people on that boat was enabling Jonah to try to escape out of God's way. And God is saying, you're going to do what I tell you to do. You're going to preach how I tell you to preach. You're going to go where I tell you to go. I don't care who said what. You're going to do what I tell you to do, period. And anyone that gets in the way, they're going to fall to the wayside too. So, 16. The men feared... Feared the, yes, the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered the sacrifice to the Lord and they took vows. Ready? Yes, well, and now the Lord have prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of a fish three days and three nights. So... God, they threw him over. He already told them what was going to happen. It was going to become. The sea was going to become. Throw him over. God just don't throw you overboard without a plan. God knows what to do for each and every one of his children. He already had a giant fish in preparation for Jonah's obedience. Jonah knew. Every time we go against God, we know. Any time that we always get in trouble, we know. We know. We know what we did, if we're going to be honest with it ourselves. We know it could have been worse if we really want to think about it for the things that we did get away with. That God was like, I'm not even going to worry about this. I'm going to worry about the real thing that I told you to do in the first place. So God had a fish right there when they threw him overboard. When they threw him overboard, Jonah went into the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah knew what was about to happen to him. God always has a place, whether it's a rehab, whether it's jail, whether it's just a halfway house, whether it's, it, whether it's a, psych, a psych place or whatever it is. God always has a place for us of refuge for us to go to when we have to sit in that humbling period with God. He already has something prepared for us. We don't know what the breakdown is going to be when God's wrath is actually on us. If you ever had God's wrath on you, baby. Find the quickest corner to try to get out quick. Listen to what God has told you. Listen and be obedient so you can get your punishment and you can go on about your business. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like whoopings. So God, hurry up and get this over with really quick. Let me get out of time out real quick. So Jonah was in there for three days and three nights inside of a huge fish. Could you imagine the potent smell of being inside of a fish in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights? Okay, so we're in chapter two. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord from his own, to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish. And he said, have you ever had to cry out to God from the belly of your mistakes? From the belly of a bed that you wasn't supposed to be in? From the belly of an overdose? From the belly of the hospital? From anything? Like, have you ever had to cry out to God from the belly of your problems that you put yourself in? This is a Jonah problem. This ain't a God problem. This is a Jonah's problem. Jonah's, Jonah's stubbornness, his, his hard-headedness, it put him there. Have you ever had to cry out to God from something that you made yourself a bed in? Jonah made his own bed to lay in. 
And if you ever had to cry out from something that you did, it's a different kind of cry. It's a different kind of cry. It's a gut-riching cry. It's a merciful cry. It's a, God, if you get me out of this, God, I promise I will do whatever you ask me to do. But God is saying, no, 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 no. I tried to get you to do what I want you to do. You then did what you want to do. So I'm going to turn my back on you for a little bit. And I'm going to take my hands off because my wrath is just me taking my hands off you and let the devil do what he wants to do to you for a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes God got to let us dance with the devil for a second to run back home. Sometimes you run home like Forrest Gump. Run, Forrest, run. Sometimes we have to take off running because we put our own selves in these situations. But God is never too far from us. God is never too far from us. So here we go. Verse, um, verse 2, chapter 2. Verse 2, chapter 3. You want to read this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 2, it says, I cried out to the Lord because of my afflictions, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Shiloh, I cried, and you have heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep and the, into. into the heart of the sea, and the floods surround me, pass over me, me all your blow." And your ways pass over me. For you have cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the floods surround me, and your billows and your waves pass over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The waters surround me, even to my soul. The deep clothes around me, weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the mornings of the mountain. The earth, the earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought me up, brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord, my God. So he's pleading his case to God. He's trying to tell God all of the goodness that God has done for him. And he's crying out for mercy. He's telling God, you have done this. You have delivered me before. The same God that did it before is the same God that would do it now. God hasn't completely turned his back on Jonah. He's very upset with Jonah. He has to show Jonah. Sometimes God has to flex his weight. You're not going to tell God what you're not going to do. That's what you're not going to do. You're going to do what God tells you to do. And God is like, this is your punishment. But he's reminding God, remember you got me out of this? Remember this happened? Remember this, God? And God's like, I hear you, but you were disobedient. You, you were disobedient. You did what you wanted to do. No, that's not what's going to happen. So we come down and he says, seven, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer went up to you into the holy temple. So he's just reminding God how when he was at his lowest, his prayers went up and God started delivering him. Sometimes we have to remind God just to soften his heart. It's kind of like a baby when they know they did wrong. It's like, hey, mommy, you so pretty. Hey, mommy. Like he's trying to remind God, like, God, remember you did this for me that one time. Remember, I did what you asked me to do the last time. Remember, I did that, God. Remember. And God's like, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I, hear you. I might be listening. I might be listening. But you horrible. You've been bad. You've been a bad child, Jonah. Like, you you, you literally tried to run for what I told you to do just because you don't like somebody. You can't run away from what God is doing because you don't like somebody. How can you call yourself a prophet, Jonah? How can you call yourself a preacher, Jonah, if you don't want to preach to the multitudes? If you don't want to preach to the people that you think are unworthy? How can you call yourself a man of God if you don't want to go preach to the people that you feel like are unworthy? Weren't you unworthy too at one point before I came and washed you? Didn't you have secrets in your closet before I came and washed you and helped you out? So don't now get on your high horse and think that you're too good to go over here and preach to these people because they got sin on you. Nah, 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 nah. You ain't too good to go preach to my people because if I had to come get you, the nerve of you thinking that you're too good now to go to the depths to go get my people. They're still my people. You might not agree with what they're doing. You might not like, 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 like their lifestyle, but you're still going to do what I ask you to do because I didn't like your lifestyle at one point, but I came and I changed your life around. You can't tell me how to go rescue my children just because you don't want to go do it. You don't want to go preach to the homeless, but you were once homeless yourself. You don't want to go preach to the drug addicts, but you once had an addiction yourself. You don't
don't want to go to preach to the suicidal, but you would want suicidal yourself. You don't want to go speak to the LGBTQ community because, you, but you were once battling with them kind of thoughts yourself. Don't forget, I am an omnipotent God. I see all, I know all, I know your inner thoughts. So don't act like you don't want to go preach to these people because you think you better. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. You not better than nobody. You just hide it well. You just dress it up better. That's all you do. But you can't go around here acting like you don't smell like sinny sin sin because I smell the inside of you, Jonah. And what we not going to do is act like we holier than thou, Jonah. You're going to go do what I tell you to do no matter what. You're going to go do what I tell you to do no matter what. Just because you looking good right now, just because I wash you with my good blood right now, don't mean you get to pick and choose which people you go to preach to. You're going to go preach to the lowest of the low, to the highest of the high, and even in the middle. You're going to go do what I tell you to do regardless. I don't care, God, but they sleeping with me and God, they, I don't care about that. You was once battling them thoughts too. Don't play with me, Jonah. Don't play with me. Just because you cover it up well, doesn't mean you don't battle with it. Doesn't mean you don't battle with it. You just hide it better. We wrestle against flesh and blood every single day. The Bible says my flesh is willing, but my, my, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Every day we battle against flesh and blood. Every single day. So don't you get on your high horse and say you don't want to go preach to these people. You don't want to go prophesy to these people. The nerve of your ungrateful self. That's why I had to humble you. Because yes, I remember how I delivered you. But you got to remember why I delivered you. And how low you was. And this is why I delivered you. Because you were once at the bottom too. So I had to come get you from the bottom. I had to tell you I love you back to life. And I had to raise you up. And you are mine. And you are going to preach how I tell you when and how. And don't you dare tell me no. Because I didn't turn my back on you. I never turned my back on you. Even at your lowest. Even when you came to my holy temple with your shoes on smelling like the outside world. I never turned my back on you. In fact, I de and delighted in you. I loved you. And I honored you. And I placed a crown of honor upon your head. So don't you go tell me you don't want to go preach to them people because they sinful. Don't you tell me you don't want to go teach them people because you don't believe in their sexuality. Don't you tell me you don't want to go speak to them people because you don't like their religion. Don't you tell me you don't want to go preach to them people because they are addicts. The nerve of you. The nerve of you. Come off your high horse or I'll knock you off myself, Jonah. Don't you ever forget who I am. Don't you ever forget who I am and what I told you. Let me keep going. Eight. Yes. Those who regard the worthless idols forsake their own mercy. Let me go back up. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer went up to you into the holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice, sa sacrifice to you. And I will, nope. I will, nope. with, with the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay what I have void, vowed, vowed, salvation, salvation is the Lord, of the Lord. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay what I have vowed to you, salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish and vomit him out of the land. So it had to be an understanding. Some of us have to come to Jesus moment. He said, God, I hear you. You don't have to keep me in here any longer. I will pay you what I owe you. I will give you what I owe you, God. I will pay you what I owe you. Salvation is the Lord. Salvation is free. And anybody anybody telling you to pray to pay them for the word to pay them for the prophecy to pay them to speak to them about the lord mm -mm. run run god tells you to sow wherever your heart is led wherever god tells you not for people telling you something for the lord i'm sorry but you can't pray me pay me for a prophecy i'm sorry but you can't pay me for a prophecy you're not gonna get it out of me i'm sorry i can't do it for you i'm sorry i can't do it for you i'm sorry not me get somebody else to do it get somebody else to do it 
get somebody else to do it. What I say is, if God leads you, if this message was a blessing, so into it. If not, I'm not going to stop from preaching. I'm going to preach free. I'm going to preach in the low ways, the high ways, the byways, in the streets. I'm going to preach so I can't preach no more. I don't lost my voice on here. I'm going to do what God tells me to do regardless. I owe God that much. I owe him that much. And not just that, I owe you guys that much. It is free. So Jonah says, God, I'm going to pay that debt. I'm going to pay that debt. Three, we're almost done, y'all. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to this, preach, preach, I'm sorry, preach this message to them that I tell you. So God is giving Jonah a second chance. He's saying, okay, I spit you out. You're on dry ground. Now get up and go to Nineveh and preach my word. Jonah has a second chance. He has a redeeming time. We know that our redeemer lives. And God is saying, I redeemed you. I spit you out. You're on dry ground. No harm, no foul. Now go do what I ask you to do. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter into the city on the day's walk. He cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloths from the greatest to the least of them. Then the word of the king in Nineveh, he arose and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with a sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it and proclaimed his and, pu and published his throughout Nineveh by the great decree of the king and his noble saying, let neither man nor beast nor herd flock taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. But let the man and his beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to his um, to his God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that was in his hand. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works, that they were turned from their evil way, and God relented from his disaster, and he had said he would bring upon that he had said he would bring upon him, and he did not do it. So Jonah, in fact, preached to them, told them about everything, and they were saved. Now, we're about to see Jonah's anger and how God has to deal with his children. They were saved, the people that Jonah did not want to go save, he preached. And they began, they went on a fast and on that fast, they didn't eat, they didn't drink, they turned from their evil ways, they turned from their wicked ways and they turned to God. Now you would think that that's a victory, right? It is, but when you don't like somebody and you living in your flesh, you don't like somebody. Like ain't nothing they can do. Jonah seen that they were good, but Jonah was like, I just don't like them. I don't like them. Forgetting that they are actually a reflection of what you used to be. Did you forget, Jonah, you used to be like them? Did you forget? Did you forget you used to be just like them? So we get into four, and we really see how anger, angry Jonah really was. Jonah did not like these people. Even the saved version, even the turned away from evil version, Jonah did not like these people, honey. Chapter four, last chapter. But it displeased Jonah ex exceedingly, and he became angry. So, right here, go ahead. So he prayed to the Lord and said, "O oh Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled. 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 Previous to tarnish, tarnish for I for I no, know I know I know that you are a gorgeous, gracious, gracious, and merciful, merciful God, slow and anger, and abundant, abundant, and loving kindness, loving kindness. And who one and who relents what relents relents from I'm doing 
doing harm. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said? What I said when I was still in my country. Therefore, I fled previously to Tarnish. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to, to die than to live. So, he is just angry. He's being a big, spoiled baby. I'm going to put it in plain terms. He don't want nobody to have his God but him right now. He don't like them. He don't care. He didn't want to do it. He don't care. He don't care that they're, they're better. He don't care about their salvation. He ain't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. And he don't want to hear about it. He's like, it is better for me to die than to be sitting here watching this. I don't like him. I don't like him. Listen, don't let, don't let your disdain for people make you miss out on your blessing. There's a lot of people that don't like me. And it's a lot of people that I love that don't like me. Because although you don't like me, I still love you. Because you not liking me is not going to change my seat in heaven. But I will love you. I will pray for you. And I know it will get under your skin and it will make your skin crawl. But you're not taking my seat in heaven. Let me tell you something. I love you because I have to love my enemies. I have to pray for my enemies. And you not finna make me miss my ship to heaven. So although you don't like me, I still love you. You are supposed to pray for your enemies. You are supposed to pray for your enemies. Not just God, I pray for them. God heal them. No. Heavenly Father, I pray abundance and peace and prosperity and just may they be blessed and highly favored, anointed. Father God, when you set the table, let it be for them too. Father God, I just wish the best for them. May their lives never, may they will never overflow, stop flowing in their lives. Father God, wherever they're praying for God, I stand in agreement with them. You just begin to speak life over them. Speak abundance over them. Speak prosperity over them. And God, although they slay me, I still love them, Father God. Just give them the miracles that they need, the signs, the wonders. Just bless them tenfold. Everything they touch, may it be blessed and favored. You just pray for them. They don't like you and that's their problem. We are all going to have a book of deeds when we get to heaven. What do you want your book to say? That you were angry because they're getting saved? That you're looking at them nasty? Facebook has this thing where it says you have your top fans, right? And the last couple of days, I had a top fan write tons of things about what they don't like about me. And I still love them back to life. Let me tell you something. Some of your biggest fans are going to be the worst ones. They can't stand you, but they can't stop watching you. They can't stand you, but they can't stop watching you. They have to. You are what they aspire to be, but they don't know how. So don't you deviate from being who God told you that you need to be. Don't you deviate from being the man or the woman that God has called you to be. You have enemies watching. Make them proud. Let me keep going. So Jonah went out so he can die. Then the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry, Jonah? <laughs> the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? No, but Jonah was Jonah. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade till, till he might see what would be um, become of the city. And the Lord had prepared a plant. So Jonah walked away. He heard God. He didn't even answer God. Jonah walked away pouting. He walked away. He found a little shade and he just sat there and he was just mad, huffing and puffing. He didn't even answer God back. He was just like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. So the Lord, the Lord made a plant to cover up Jonah that he might be a shade for his head and deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm. And so it damaged the plant and it withered. And it happened when he arose, when the sun arose, that he prepared a vermin east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than live. Baby, Jonah was a big baby. Jonah was petty. Jonah was a big baby and God was even pettier. God gave him a little bit of shade and then he got a worm and ate it up. He was like, we're going to play petty games then, Jonah. We're going to play these petty games with your spoiled little butt. Look, Manny. Oh, you missed it. With your spoiled little self. We're going we're gonna to play games with your spoiled little self. 
So listen. So he said again, it is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about a plant? First of all, Jonah, you were sit, you walked away from God talking to you. You went and sat in a corner. God said, I'm going to give you shade. Then you got mad at the shade that God gave you and God took it back. And God says, isn't it even mad? It's like, isn't it even worth you getting mad about a plant that you didn't even plant, Jonah? Like, bro, what is your problem, you big baby you? So listen. So he said, is it even, and he said, is it even right for me to be angry even to death? But the Lord said, you have had pity on a plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up right at night, came up at night and perished in night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that a great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between the right, the right hand and their left with much livestock? Listen to how many people were saved and Jonah being just a big baby. He said, there were more than 120,000 people. Uh, more than 120,000 people were, were saved. And Jonah being a big baby. All the way until the end of Jonah. It didn't, even, it didn't even end off right. That was the end. It didn't even end off right. Jonah couldn't even end the chapter off right. Because he was still being a big baby as he came in and as he left out. He did incredible work. He did save the people when God humbled his little behind, but he still had a nasty attitude about how he went about it. It's all about how we're working. We need to have a positive attitude. What are we wanting people to say about us when we pass? How do we want people to remember us by? To me, I end off Jonah. I end off leaving his, me saying that Jonah was a petty prophet. He was a petty person and a petty prophet. He did what God told him to do by force, not by choice. Not by choice. He did it by force. He was a prophet. He was a pastor, but he was petty. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to leave this earth with somebody leaving my last chapter like that. Angry about a plant he didn't create, about shade he didn't create, and about people getting saved. That is something to celebrate. Do you know what that says about you? That you and the anointing that you carry in God was so, was so good. Stop. Was so good that it saved over 120,000 people. Over 120,000 people. That is your real legacy, Jonah. That is what people should really be ending off, Jonah. That you and the obedience of God went and saved more than 120,000 people. That is how his legacy, legacy should have been. Not the petty, angry pastor and prophet, Jonah. So Jonah, I'm going to redeem you really quick. Jonah delivered through God 120,000 people. And if Jonah can do it, we can do it with just obedience from God. So if God is telling you to do something, do it. And if God is for you, no one can be against you, not even yourself. And you can't run and you can't hide from God. You can't run and you can't hide from God. There's no ship in the sea too far out that God won't come and conjure up a storm. There's no valley too low that God won't come down and cause an earthquake to get you in the ground. Do what God tells you to do, no matter what. I end off with this, because I'm about to put this one to bed. <laughs> yes. If God is for you, who can be against you? Don't get so caught up on who God's telling you to go to and to rescue. And don't think that your stuff is so good now that it once didn't stink. That you weren't once homeless, that you weren't once addicted to something, that you weren't, weren't broken and battled with sexuality and all of these things. And you're thinking that you're too good now to go talk to somebody, to go preach to somebody. Don't think that you're too good now to go do God's work because you were once in those shoes. You were once in those shoes. And don't let God have to humble you to get you back to where you were to understand that God is not playing with you. We have specific tasks at hand and we need to be obedient to the T. 
And if this message was a blessing to you, my link is always in the bio. I love you guys and have a great night. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Go in Facebook and we're saying goodbye to TikTok now. Bye. <laughs>